public comments tonight on the budget. meeting back to order for a public hearing for the cereal want beverage distance waiver to order. Is there any public comments? I will, I will, I will uh, suggest that you do a three minute talk if anyone has anything to say. So, Mr. Hood, would you like to stand up and talk? You ready for my presentation? Yes, I'm ready. <clears throat> well, I'm here not to preach a sermon, but I am here to express my concern about the proliferation of the drug alcohol. The track record of it is undeniable what it does to people. Having a pretty good education in this, I know what the chemistry is of it, and when you, you don't have to be a chemistry to know what it does, but when you are, you can see the depth of effect in the human body. And I might just review a little bit. When I come to St. John, I couldn't have come to a better town to teach school. Here's a record of some of the things in 1989 when we voted in here, and I'll just read a few of these if, if I'm permitted the time to do this, because it says the main argument for admitting the consumption of alcoholic beverages is that it will give organizers a jubilee celebration more flexibility in planning events that might appeal to the young. The most frequently cited event would be to draw the young adults would be the street dance. There would be more success if beer could be allowed to be consumed. Present laws prohibit the consumption of beer and liquor on public grounds. 
The Jubilee is regarded by many as an event for old fogies. We agree that the organizers of Jubilee should do more to make the annual spring event more attractive for young people. But we need to see the other side of the issue. Alcohol is a drug. All of us recognize there is terrible flow of drugs into our country that causes great harm to the health and well-being of citizens. The cost to fight the drug problem is enormous. But we're now being asked to make another drug more available. Now, the American Medical Association reported alcohol to be the number one drug abuse of our society. And I might say that when I attended a, a, a summer institute in uh, analytical chemistry out of Greeley, Colorado, in seminars we agreed that eth ethanol was the number one drug problem, mainly because it's legal, it's been promoted on a large scale. Alcohol has never been associated with anything good in life. The use and abuse of alcohol is a scourge upon the land. America is spending more to rehabilitate alcoholics and it collects taxes on the alcohol that is consumed. Alcohol continues to be the drug most associated with crime, violence, accidents, marital problems, according to Dr. Walter Menninger of the Menninger Institute of the People. St. John's namesake, Governor John P. St. John in 1879, courageously proposed a prohibition amendment. I don't want to get into that. Now then, another item I have here, being a World War II veteran, one that was injured with a head wound over here when they ditched that B-24 bomber, March 8, 1944, with the loss of eight comrades, luckily, I was saved from that. Now my brother, who was also in the, when I got killed in France, I came back home after all of this over a basket case. But alcohol was not the thing that redeemed me, I'll tell you for, for sure. Now just a few years ago, the National Guard has come out with the red, there was a, the Kansas the National Guard here with a document to try to uh, free our Kansas uh, from the drug alcohol uh, uh, operations. Now I might say that these veterans that are coming back now especially have tremendous emotional problems and alcohol is the last thing in the world they need to be redeemed. Now it bothers me, and, and here about two or three years ago when this Senate Bill 298 came up, I want to read Dr. Jim Baker, who's a, who, who was a, a medical doctor, in his defense of his no vote. I'll give you one more minute, Mr. Hood. What? I'll give you one more minute. You're, you're limited to three minutes. You've already went past it. So just go ahead and say your piece. All right. Because the law has little to do with uniformity of liquor laws, with local option Sunday liquor sales, he goes on to say that uh, although folk that drives of uniform liquor laws, the purpose is to increase the sale of alcohol that will come at the expense of more lives, more parents with empty bedrooms. It goes on and on. And there's one more thing, I get this thing from the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Every year there's about 12,000 people killed as drunk drivers and the, the concern I have is they can go in here and, and consume this in our, in our restaurants, go out and drive these cars and there's all sorts of evidence it says half drunk drivers are responsible for a lot of those uh, events. And it bothers me that we can uh, promote the consumption of that in our restaurants and we review uh, authorize this one and the other places will the pizza place and these others want to have the same uh, right I could go on and on and I guess my time is up now but I hope I've made somewhat of a point that you should consider these things before you ca uh, carry out your uh, your final decision Okay.
Thank you for your time. I wish I had more, but you don't want to listen to us, so I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you very much for showing up. Who's next? Is there anyone else here tonight that would like to speak on that? Well, I just would like to say that, uh, you know, there was a law against an ordinance against the thousand foot from the church. And laws was put in for a reason. And then you go and break them whenever you turn around and feel like it. And you break one, you break another, you break another. Like Jim says, okay, if the piece of help wants to put one in, if you're going to do for one, you're going to have to do for all. Uh, who knows what's going to be six months, a year from now, what new, some new eating establishment is going to be in. You're going to have another one, maybe another one close to a church. You're going to have to do it the same way with this, if that's the case. You've got four places. You've got Dillon's, you've got Patty's, you've got the V, you've got the liquor store. You've got four places you can get your beer, your booze, your whatever you need. I think four in town is enough. Uh, you know, uh, what are you going to do next? Are you going to do away with the law and let them sell built within so many feet of the school? I mean, one thing brings another. We've got a place to, to get their drinks, and I think that's enough. And I don't want to go in some cafe, and you got a bunch of young rowdies sitting over there drinking beer, when I just want a nice, calm place to eat a meal. And it's going to get, there's going to be times that it's going to get a little, ah, 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 and a little loud and ready. And people just want to take their families in and eat a nice meal. Thanks, Kenny. Is there any other comments this evening? Yes, Steve. I have some. In all due respect to you, gentlemen, we also should concern an economic thing here. It's been my experience. I've been in the world longer than you, Kenny, and not as long as you, Kim, but I don't think that someone goes to a restaurant to raise cane and have too much to drink. It's consumed with the meals. Secondly, with regard to distance, from our church property, I could spit a watermelon seed to a facility that has hard liquor. It doesn't make us any less Christian, it doesn't hurt us. So I remember and recall when the liquor store came in, there was adamant opposition and hadn't heard a thing. I haven't yet to hear of one incident of any problem. We can't control everybody. So I think that this restaurant has fell, fallen down about four or five times, and I think this would keep it going. Uh, it's strictly 3.2 type of drink, and that's all I have to say to that. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else like to speak this evening? I would. Yes, Terry. I'd just like to say that I agree too. I think this is the right way to go about this. I mean, if this we've had four restaurants in and out of that place come in and fail, and if if someone you know near beer will help them stay in business, then I think we should be all for trying to do it. I hope we get four or five restaurants come into this town and want to sell beer. I hope we get that many restaurants come in here. It would be a godsend for this community to have four or five restaurants come in here and ask to be able to sell beer. I mean, people are not going to go out to Pueblo Nuevo and, and turn it into a strip club and dance on the tables because of the fact they can buy 3.2 beer. It's, it's, I think it's silly to even be concerned about it. I mean, look at the newspaper. If I came up and said, hey, the newspaper can't survive unless I run advertisement for beer in a newspaper, are you people going to say, fine, don't put your advertisements for beer in a newspaper unless the newspaper shut down? Of course you're not. And that's the same thing you're trying to do with the restaurant. So I think what the city council is doing is a very good decision. I'm really glad to see it. Is there any other discussion this evening? Is there any other discussion this evening? Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but... <laughs> well, you're, you speak up. That's yeah, what we're here well, for. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to both sides. And both sides have valid points. But we still need to come back to the original thing about our ordinance and why it was put there. And uh, 
The restaurant was built across the street from a church. We knew this. Both parties knew that going in. And as for there's been three or four people already running this restaurant, well, I don't know if beer's going to make the difference or not. I mean, Stafford's had two restaurants for years, and they've survived without some, you know, alcoholic beverages. And again, if we overlook one ordinance, again, where does it end? What ordinance next are we going to ignore? And personally, I don't want to drive down First Street and see a Coors or a Budweiser sign blinking in a, in a front window across from a church. I don't see this in any other town. And I'd rather not see it in our town. And I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Anybody else have anything to say? Yes. Can I make one more statement that's positive? Yes, you may. I've been in this town for... I'm 89 years old. We have an establishment over here where we can do so many things in a positive way in terms of teaching kids and giving them vocational benefits. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. And this is what I'd like to see is being promoted, that type of thing. Now Bobby remembers when he was in physics out there, we took his old weight truck, we took that old Plymouth car and turned it over, and we did a lot of experiments like that. He knows what I'm talking about. And we could do that kind of stuff right over here. We could we're doing everything to promote new kinds of energy. Yes. We could show how wind energy can be made, how solar energy can be harnessed over here. And we can teach these kids some basic things right over there. And I want to see that instead of pursuing these other things that's supposed to be so great. Thank you. I'm going to go. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Yes. May I make a clarification? Yes, you may. The way the city code states right now is that they, um, the, the distance between the church and the establishment has to be 120 feet. It does not state specifically whether it's property line to property line or building to building. So therefore, when the application was made, I spoke with Miguel and said, let's do this as conservative as necessary so everybody knows, so it's not behind the scene or anything. And in the code, it gives um, leeway, it states the waiver. So we're not changing, we're not going past the limits of the ordinance or the code by doing the waiver. I'd like to say something, if I may. Yes. It looks to me like I have fought this this uh, property line controlling one side of the street to the other street for 15 or 20 years myself. It looks to me like the way I see it is when you drive down the middle of the street, the center line of that street is where you buy a piece of property. That's where you go take off to get a piece of property survey. When you drive down that street, you have three options. You can either look left, you can look right, or you can look straight down the road. And I think that's a boundary, the center of the street. It shouldn't be right to control from one side of the property to another side of the property what the other person does. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Am I going to say something? Yes. I believe one sign don't want to say really nothing. Because at once, the light can come in from hard yards, come tires, looking for something support, maybe this help or not. It's a, it's a human thinking thing from everyone, and I respect everyone thinking, you know. Because yes. the, when they like him to bring something good or bad, they go, they want to find it. And they're going to cross the first, the third, or the fourth street. And this is everyone on our own now. Uh, you know, respect myself or the, or the others. This is really everyone's, that I respect every decision here, and thanks for anyway letting me the opportunity to come in here. Yes. Thanks everybody. Definitely. You have a good restaurant in our town. Thank you so much. Madam Mayor, is there yes. any projection on what kind of sales tax potential is we're involved with here? Did anybody do the math on that? No, I don't know that there's information to get that. 
I mean, can we even take a guess? I mean, I'm not going to. I'm sure it's something. Yeah. I know it's more cell sex than you'll get at the close. Yeah. yeah. Are you planning on putting some kind of signs in your front window? Or? Really, <clears throat> I believe if, if uh, we get some opportunity to put up some alcohol, I think we don't need any sign because the when they, they when they're gonna eat, some you know everyone thinks I want to eat something and they maybe bring the water to be from support my bike. Maybe they can get it or not. We don't need it. Big promotion. The promotion is really inside the door. What I really think it is, a, you know, for respect for the church, for the others, yeah. one another. My point is, people's coming, say, "Hey, you got beer?" Yes. That's it. Right inside, right inside the, the meal. Because if they want to take and go up to the meal, they know go to the uh, they, they know go to the bar. They know what type of beer we can sell it in. If they want to eat, they want to drink one or two beers. That's it. Inside, we don't need a big promotion to make this big or short, you know. So we you are planning on putting some kind of... <coughs> well, you place. know, we need to... They ask them, hey, what kind of beer do you have? Well, we don't need probably to put the big signs everywhere, the, the, uh, you know, over the tables, probably one, uh, one list. Say what kind of beer we sell it, it's done. They decide if they, they can drink that level of the alcohol or not, and how many they can they can uh, what what you know how many they can get it they can drink or uh, if probably probably the city decides how many how many we have obligated to say only I can sell one or two right. you know because uh, the quantities the quantities here or there can hurt every everybody here liquor uh, or uh, dealers because they got the they got a box they don't they don't, they don't have a you know idea how many they can drink right. if we if you decide yes we can, uh, we can sell some some beers maybe we can uh, hear it or quantities uh, decision or you know some uh, some point to stop say hey, I can sell more I can't so, so if, if a limit was put, if this was passed, See, and a limit was put on, you wouldn't be against that, you enforce it? Yes, I mean, we need to put one aside, say, for respect to St. John's right. uh, citizens, mm -hmm. we only can sell one, two, or three. Right. Whatever quantities, uh, if, if the intention is passed mm -hmm. uh, for, for oppositions, high opposition, but uh, this one is have always at the minimum quantity, well, we can really start like that and later in another meetings, we can, you can decide what's going on. Right. And also you're going to, uh, you're going to rely primarily on word of mouth and just in-house advertising for your beer, nothing, <clears throat> no big huge sign that says beer or Coors, Miller, Bud or anything like that. No, you can decide, actually you can decide what kind of sign we can write, we can respect whatever you decide at that point. You can, you know, because I have no experience in that. If you listen to ours, what we can follow, we need to follow the line. Because what do you, you decide? We need to respect your decisions. Yes. Isn't there a state law that says you have, if you have alcohol and food, you have to serve so much food against Yeah, there has to be a, I think, so that that take percent care of that. sells in food. That that should should but that's for the restaurant itself. Sunny choice. Right. Yeah. If someone's thinking we're going to drink only beer, we can run into something that we only can sell beer under meals. Yes. Yes. At yes. that point, the one go only for drink, we say we can sell beer, you know, you know, on some, on some uh, meal. Yes. Because this one's going to hurt you directly, you know, that not the end. But you see, they think it makes it up. Right. Thank you. Yes, I think it's safe to say a consumer alcohol is not going to go to a restaurant to get drunk or drink too much. They're going to go down where they got atmosphere, down by the track. Well, <laughs> I, I will, I'm going to butt in here for just a minute. I, I know where Kenny's coming from. I've seen it in a lot of restaurants. And in my opinion, that comes from 
the management and the waiter that's waiting on that table. You, there's family in here. You, this table here, if they're getting ready, you need to settle down or you're going to be asked to leave. This is a family restaurant, so maintain. And, and I've seen it before. I mean, I, I have. It's like, I mean, I've been there myself. I'm thinking, will you please settle? You know, you know I've got little kids with me, but, you know, that's, that comes from management and the waiter taking care of that table. So, yes, it gets control of them and settle them down. Is so. there any provision in this ordinance if this gentleman would abuse that right by, by moving this that you could take it away from him? No. But, like that. but I think he would, I think himself as the owner of a restaurant, he would notice that people quit coming in there because it's getting too out of control and they're not coming in there eating. See, I'm trying to cover all bases, Mayor. Uh -huh. Mayor. I, you know, this thing can be blown plumb out of per perception here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just threw that out there because that can happen. Yes. But I don't think in this instance. We're a quiet world now. We're not going to have any problems. Yes. I have a question. Um, if you would grant this waiver, and say the gentleman decides to move on and not run the restaurant anymore and another party comes in that might be more undesirable, would he still have the right to sell the, the beer? No. It would only oh. be to one person? Oh. No. Yes. Go ahead. I mean, does this, once it's waived, could any future uh, management have the right to sell the beer? I answered no, but I'll ask John. By the application, to, to get a cereal malt beverage application, to get a license, they have to come in and apply. Part of that is to, um, they have to hit so many different stipulations. One of them is this distance. And if they waive the distance for this application, it's only for this application, for, for this um, company, that is coming in. And his application is strictly for in-house consumption. He can't sell packaged goods like uh, over here at Dillon's. Somebody can't buy a case of beer in there and carry it out. It's only for consumption within the restaurant. Yes, that's illegal. It's illegal to do that's that the bottle. You yeah. can't, if someone said, can I can take my cup? No, you can't take nothing, draw any container. Only one that you are drinking inside, nothing else. So the answer is the waiver stays with the applicant. So if somebody else came into there and they wanted to do that, then they would have to go through the same process. And we would be right back here for that other, for the next applicant. I'm not sure it's whether there's a name change or not. It, as long as they, they made their application under an LLC, if that should change and it becomes a partnership and it's the same people, they have to Reapply. So. How many restaurants do you own? How many restaurants do you have? Uh, we have four. You sell beer in any restaurant? And, and all of them. We, got, we get the permit from Anthony, the last one that we open it. If we give quickly the, uh, the permit for the 3.2 which is the long one. But, uh, we got a school beside the, the, beside the, the road, right in front. Uh, well, you know, every one uh, 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 county got a different rules and things and decisions. Uh, we sell them only at that, you know, that level. And uh, we are, uh, there's only a few kinds that come in under, under, you know, some kinds like, like Pacifico tiles, like Modelo Negro, whatever, this came under, under liquor level. We we only sell that one on on Pratt. and the and the others only we sell the the ones that we still look in here. Yeah, you will not have a liquor license to sell strong beer or drinks. Yeah, Sorry. that would come from the state anyway, but it's not. Sorry. Yes, I mean, you have to have to Yes, Bob. Well, I remember, Kenny, and I understand where you're coming from. 
let me ask you a question. You had a had a pool hall next door to your barber shop for years. Was there ever any real problems that you remember? Not to me, but there's been some fights in there, and uh, some crazy loves when I'm older than you are. I know. <laughs> but the uh, reason I ask that, I remember Garland Manzel, and, there's and I think I saw several of the, the older guys today playing dominoes in that beer joint when I was starting to go to the beer joint. And I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I understand what you're saying. I want to make the right decision. Yeah, but I think there's a, a vast difference between a beer joint and a family restaurant. The word family. I think there is. That's what gets us is a family restaurant. Well, you want to take your little kids in there and they say, oh yeah, they're drinking. That's, it's from well, that's good for you. you know, kids. See everybody else drinking. Well, we'll see every piece of hub. Every bit of sells beer at their family restaurants, too. And I don't see them having an issue with it. Or Pizza Hut. Almost every Pizza Hut sells beer. That's a family restaurant. Because they're used in the bigger towns where people drink more, too. Like the Great Bands or Huts or Wichita's, Kansas City's. Good for a sip. Lives for. Okay. Council. What to. What do you think, of, what's the increase in your revenue? Just an idea, is it going to, are you, uh, is this going to be a contributing factor of keeping the doors open? Mm, that's kind of the answer to do that. But, mm, what's happening, uh, anybody's coming and takes a seat and say, you was over, I got, I got a, nothing to, I can't be tired, I got to make one, what kind of beer you have? Maybe I need one or two for my meals. We don't, we don't have to say we don't have nothing to wear. They keep one. We visit from uh, you know another town, some company. Sometimes they hear from some business or business or whatever they asking about it. They, they, when they really not find really at the minimum nothing, because in real world they say what can you have? We mentioned it and they say you know how you know someone that came under over the level. Said we only sell these three, four kinds. That's that we have. Okay, they select something between those things because they wanted something for relaxing, for eating. Everyone, you know, say give me that it's big, better than really nothing. This is I tell you, this is really own. What I think it is is really own personal. Everyone and uh, nobody put a gun in. Say go drinking here, there, buy there. Only we need to follow the rules for who, the ages for the, for the judges. They get with them, follow the ages, the IDs. Under your decisions, it says I respect. In case, under what conditions, one is sign where. Some recommend in case this pass what kinds or one is or uh, and what and on an entrance only or maybe an in or simple simple pruner if you should ever say hey you have bird yes this is your decision you decide in what conditions we can sell thanks I, again yes I will say that um, I grew up in a family who um, had a drink with a meal when we went out to a restaurant. I, every time we'd go out, my parents, my grandparents would have a drink and they never hid it from me. Um, we learned from a small age that you can have a drink and it's okay. I think the lesson behind all that is that your kids are educated to do what's right by the law. I mean, uh, my friends whose parents hid the fact that they drank or uh, did not allow their kids to understand it, those were the kids who snuck around and drank more than they should have. So I feel like it has a lot to do with education. 
this decision has a lot to do with a restaurant that has come into our community and has been of great service to us. Um, although I respect what Kenny has to say and what Jim has to say, I really have taken this decision to heart. But as a city council, we are looking at economic development too, and we have a dying community. And if we have a business that can come in and uh, be of service to us, I think we need to, I think that's very important to consider. So with that, I'm going to move that we... Uh, well, before you do, I'd like to say something I agree with everything you said. And I think that I look at both sides of this, and I agree that everyone has a solid point on this. And I think that what you said basically is drink in moderation. That's the way I was taught by my father. If you're going to drink, you don't do it excessively. You know, have some, show some responsibility for yourself. I think that if you have, you take responsibility for your customers coming in and you set limits for them that we have set for you, then we, you need to follow those. Customers need to look at that as well. Um, it, this is something that, this is a tough decision for all of us, and I think that whatever, we're not going to make everyone happy. So no matter what we do, you're going to have one side that's happy and one side that isn't. I'm all for bringing more businesses into this community. I'm all for doing whatever it takes to make this town succeed. You know, if that means that we have to help service this gentleman right here in his business, then I'm for it. One more thing. Okay, Steve. Yes. I, I can't say this with any assurance, but I feel reasonably sure in my mind that seven out of ten families barbecue in their backyard and dad and mom has a beer. If he's an underage child, he sees that and he, he doesn't drink it like Amy articulated. So really, the, you know, and I, I appreciate these folks are saying too, but I, I'm, I'm on the same page with Mark. I think it's an economic thing and it's it's education. You know, if you, the kids, they don't see mom and dad get blasted, you know, and it's not going to really hurt you. Thank you. Yes, can you make a motion? Yes. I'd like to move that we approve the serial malt beverage waiver. There a second? Second that motion. Is there any more discussion? I think I've got to agree with Amy and, and Mark on it. If you're looking at the economics of it, We've got a church here in town that, with a private club right behind it. I, Kenny, I, I think looking at it from a real point of view and from a council's point of view, I don't, I can't go the other way. Is there what you got to do? You got to live with it, I don't know. It's a tough decision. together to not allow them people 
that we know to put our foot down. Well, when we had a meeting out at the Outfellows once a couple of years ago, and Larry Welch was yes. out. And Jerry London said, I'll take you out right now. I'll drive you around and show you where. And he says, we're going we're gonna to stand behind you. We're going to help you. He said, let's go. We'll take my car. I'll take you and I'll get the driver's license. I'll tell you their name. But we're going to stand behind you. Yeah. But they didn't do nothing. Right. And that's, that's the whole thing. We can't do anything when we try and it hits a brick wall, but then the other side don't do anything. Right. And we all know here in town who's doing it. Right. Maybe if we all pull together the right way, <clears throat> hopefully something can be done. Let's be positive. We'll try to be positive. That's all I ask. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Council meeting, special council meeting back to order for August 9, 2011. New business. Uh, Swimming approval for the completion of the season. John and Mel, which one? John, or John probably. John? <laughs> well, um, Jeff's going to have to go back to school and he. And part of his cards were leaving for college, and so he was um, thinking that we needed to close the pool, except for weekends, at, at the end of this week, which means there's two full weeks that our children won't be back in school yet. So, um, with his permission, we looked for somebody to um, run the pool for those two weeks, and we found um, Lisa Cornwell, and Trish Wade, between the two of them, they'll take care of those two weeks during the week and then Joe can have the weekends. There are several guards in town. Um, I don't have them lined out. I, you know, I need to visit with Joe and the, the ladies that have agreed to do it to make sure they haven't talked to guards yet. But there are guards still in town if they're willing to work. So um, the thought is we would still have hours from one to six swimming and not and not in the evenings it would just be one to six in the afternoons for those two weeks that's also i think the hours that joe is thinking of doing yeah, for the weekends. Not, so. but at least we'll have it open. so yeah and, and then it'll great. be open until when's the last labor labor day, day, after weekend. labor day weekend and then the school will be using it the first two weeks of school. Isn't that right? What was the reason why? Yeah. At least it said if we wanted to do it for a few hours after school, that she's open to that. So if oh. we decide that. Who's in that? Lisa at home. Home. That's a good idea. I mean, if we're going to go ahead and put the, the chemicals and stuff in it for the phys ed class, then, okay. I mean, that's an option. She yeah. just mentioned that. She wants to try it. That's a good idea. That's a real good idea. And that would be, of course, if she has um, guards because they will be in athletics by then. So, true. Okay. So, council's okay with that. Okay. All right. Hearing date for the KDHD loan. Okay. I gave you a, a sheet that shows this is. We started working on the loan application. A gal from um, Ransom Financial, they are the folks that are helping us with our rate study. They will, they have a grant from KDHE to help us with this, this application and a rate study free of charge rather than paying somebody else to do that. Um, and it has to be done either by the engineer or by somebody like them. And this is one of the first things that we need to do is to get this notice for public hearing. If we can get it, if you guys approve it, we can put it in the paper Sunday or by Friday and there has to be a 30 day waiting period before we can have the hearing. So it's a little more than 30 days to have it on our August 20th meeting, right before our meeting or whatever. And that would be a time that we could easily um, have our public hearing, have Don here to explain all the information that the public needs to hear. You know, we've talked about having that public hearing. It's very important with the rate, with what we're doing 
for the nitrate? What are you? I'm talking at? about the. You're talking about the bed. September. Okay, oh, thank you. All right, I thought you said August, John. My bad. Maybe I'm sorry. I did. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thirty days from <laughs> okay. the 17th when it comes out in the paper. Okay. Um, we would need to have it someplace else before we have seen it. Speak to somebody. Um, wait, what do you need, Carrie? You need an officer? That girl over on the wheelchair, she's over here on 2nd Street, and your battery went dead, and I was kind of wondering if somebody... Okay. Oh, Is there anybody in the police office right there? Just a minute. John, yeah. no, I don't think John is so. calling dispatch. I'll yeah. just step out and call dispatch. Okay. Thank you, Carrie, for letting us know. Okay, go ahead, John. So, so John is wanting to get this published, and then we can have a hearing, public hearing, on the 17th. Is that what she said? No. On September the 20th. Okay. That's a Saturday. All right, September the 20th. Well, it would, it, yes, that's the dead day. Oh, yeah, September? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then, and then we can go ahead and proceed on. Yeah. Do you need a motion? Yes, we do need a motion. Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Thanks, Council. Okay, so Mr. Mark Beverly, application for Pueblo, what's that about? Thank you. Actually, put that back on there. I don't know if since the oh, waiver passed. We have to accept the application now? Then yeah, maybe we'll go to generator. Yeah, let's go to Walt John. Okay. Uh, I've located a uh, generator, and I would like to uh, have permission to uh, spend up to ten thousand dollars on it. It could be used at uh, possibly the new nitrate plant, or at Irwin Wells, or anything else. And I think it could be a real good uh, purchase for the city. So I'd just like authorization to spend up to that amount. Do you want to tell the story behind it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You if you have any questions, questions, you can ask now. Yes. You're asking for 10. Up to 10? To go up to 10. Yes. yes. Okay. All new permission. That's on the generator. I'll second. Any more discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All those best say aye. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Council. Okay. John, we did the hearing date. So you approved it? Yes. Amy made the motion. And Mark seconded. Amen. Four to zero? Yes. Thank you. And then we jumped over the serial and Mark beverage application for the restaurant because we wouldn't for sure what to do. Okay, and up to 10,000, is that what you said? Yes. Application. 
I would that we accept the application uh, for the uh, ceremony coverage for a on the way. Do you second? Second. Aye. 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 